Forrest Breifogel here. An organization used a production's lot measurement to determine acceptance or rejection of the lot. The organization wasted a tremendous amount of money with this testing and reporting. In addition, this form of reporting does not encourage process improvement so that there is a future output metric performance enhancement. This session will describe technical problems with commonplace process capability indices reporting and what to do to resolve the issue. The described enhanced measurement reporting approach can also enhance standard business metrics such as red, yellow, green scorecards and a table of numbers. The agenda for this session consists of four topics. The first topic is discuss, using an example data set, the creation and assessment of a CP, CPK, PP, and PPK process capability indices report. Secondly, describe the advantages of a 30,000 foot level reporting alternative to traditional process capability indices reporting. Thirdly, show the mathematical issues with traditional process capability indice reports that 30,000 foot level reporting resolves. This is a big deal. And finally, compare approaches and provide a next step opportunity. The first agenda topic. The example data set that I'll use in this session is taken from Table 10.2 of Integrated Enterprise Excellence, Volume 3. Now, why process capability indices? What they're, what they're to do is describe how a process is performing relative to fulfilling customer requirements. The standard deviation denominator value in these indices equations depends upon the process sapling approach. Often people don't discuss this or talk about it, but it's a big deal. For example, from the same process, if we were to examine, examine it, the process using an XMR control chart and use that data source to calculate process capability, it can be quite different than an X bar and R chart from the uh, same uh, process. We need to keep in mind CP and CPK equations are using short-term variability while PP and PP equations are using long-term variability for standard deviation. Understanding throughout an organization how well a process is performing relative to customer needs is very important, but it's difficult to actually accomplish with process capability indices. I'll later present a much better approach for determining and presenting the capability of a process. Now the third thing that's very important before you make this process capability statement is for the process to be stable. That is, there's no out of control condition data points if we do a control chart of the data. So for this particular situation, we don't have any out of control conditions, so we could go in and do an analysis of this stable process and report out a process capability uh, assessment. Now if we did that, then we would get this type of report out. You can see on the right hand side of the slide the CP and CPK calculated values. Now a typical organization would say this process is not satisfactory relative to its output in that the values for process capability indices are less than often 3 point or 1.35 criteria. However, how bad is the output of this process relative to really achieving the customer specification limits of 72 to 78? Very difficult to quantify. So try to explain these values throughout the organization and what to do about them is difficult. So that leads me to the next agenda topic, which is to describe the advantages of a 30,000 foot level reporting alternative to traditional process.
process capability indices reporting. Now, if we were to examine figure 12.5 from Integrated Enterprise Excellence Volume 3, we would see an example of a 30,000 foot level report out. This form of reporting has many advantages. For this 30,000 foot level report, the individual's chart, that is the left chart in the two part chart pair, indicates the process is stable. That is, there's no data points beyond the upper and lower control limits. With high level process output 30,000 foot level reporting, a stable process is considered predictable. Now, the next obvious question is what do you predict? And that's where you'd use this probability plot on the right hand side to determine that value, and then you report it at the bottom of the chart, which is. 17.4% non-conformance rate, which is easy to understand. Now the probability plot, again, the report which is used to calculate this statement at the bottom of the chart, the way it does that is it evaluates the percentage estimated below 72 and that above 98. It combines those values, those percent values, to make the statement at the bottom of the chart. For this particular situation, we'd have a 17.4 non-conformance rate. Now, if this reported rate, which is not only now, but in the future, is considered undesirable, that means we need to undertake a process improvement effort to make things better. Now, when we try to determine what to make better, it's important not just to try to understand all the ups and down variability that we have in the region of stability, which is some common cause variability of the process. So it's basically noise to the process. However, organizations can conduct statistical tests, or so to speak, why hypothesis series and of what the team might think might improve the viscosity achievement relative to the customer needs. For example, we might suggest there's a differences between suppliers and we could test this out statistically. So 30,000 foot level reporting has many advantages. This form of reporting provides the results of a process control chart and a capability calculator in the same chart. This combination of two traditional report outs in one reporting is essential. Process capability indices calculation and report out of CP and CPK and so on alone does not provide information as to whether the process is in control or not. It, if the assessed process is not in control, the calculated indices values are invalid. 30,000 foot level report states that the capability of a process at the same time in the two chart pair in terms that everyone could easily understand. <laughs> so 17.4 non-conformance rate estimate is much easier to understand than the values of CP and so on. So far this reporting also provides a stable process, a prediction statement. That's a capability statement that everyone could easily understand and if it's not desirable, there's a need to improve the process. 30,000 foot level reporting supplies a means to identify and will report when an improvement occurs through the staging of an individual's chart. So if you did make an improvement in the process, then the individual's chart should transition to enhanced level of performance. The associated probability plot for the two part chair pair for an improvement process provides a capability statement that is determined from the after staging data. 30,000 foot level reporting can easily address non-normal situations in words that everyone can understand. For example, non-conformance rate. Now why log normal distribution? Well, often people say, well, you're just playing games with numbers. No. Normal distribution believes that we have 
a situation where this uh, distribution can extend, extend from minus infinity to plus infinity. But often there's a boundary. And that natural boundary could be zero. For example, the time to complete a task. That can't get below zero. Or the flatness of a part. That can't get below zero either. Long normal distributions are often a good fit for this situation. 30,000 foot level reporting can also apply to business metrics, monthly profit margin, on delivery, customer satisfaction. And even when we don't have a specification, we can still apply these techniques. So now what I'm going to do is describe a free 30,000 foot level reporting app that is accessible through the web page shown here. Now I'll, I'm going to now again demonstrate the use of this app which again, you can freely download for your data. If you were to access the link that was shown on the previous in the slide deck, you would then see the uh, IWE chart builder that's shown here, Integrated Enterprise Excellence Chart Builder. The first thing that you would do is click on Browse to find your data set. So our particular data set that we want to examine is this particular data set here, example 1002. If I open that data set, then what we see is a snippet of the left, upper left hand corner of that spreadsheet. This is no subgrouping. The data I want to analyze is viscosity. So I'm control C copying that title of that column, pasting it over here. In our particular situation, we have an upper and lower specification limit. This is 78 as an upper and 72 as a lower. Pretty exciting. We've got a 30,000 foot level chart that immediately pops up and it states that our non-conformance rate is 17.4 percent which is similar to what was which is exactly the same as what was in the book. We can also note the column name of this so we can change that to batch Next thing that we can do is add a title to it. We'll call it viscosity. The next label labels batch. Now we can see a 30,000 foot level report out for viscosity. So you can do the same kind of reporting for not only this type of data, attributes, subgroup data, and so on. Very easy to do, and if you right-click on it, then you can save the image as a PNG file that you can access in your PowerPoint presentation, a Word document, or whatever. Returning back to the PowerPoint presentation, I just described the free 30,000 foot level reporting app. The next topic I'll be describing is a very important one to show and understand the issues with traditional process capability industry reports <coughs> that the 30,000 foot level resolves. Now the way you, you look at these particular values and understand the issues that you can have with process capability industry reporting and how 30,000 foot level stresses those is you would want to go to smartersolutions.com and then hover over and select under resources for us favorites. If you did that, that would lead you to the page that has many links. The link that we're most interested in for this explanation of process capability is shown here. If you were to access that link, that would describe the mathematical problems we have with process capability in C reporting. Now the final topic for this session is to compare the approaches I've been talking about here and provide a next step opportunity.
traditional process capability shown on the left hand side of the slide and on the right hand side is my 30,000 foot level alternative. As you can see 30,000 foot level statement is a lot easier to understand than process capability indices. 30,000 foot level reporting has many advantages over a traditional report as we summarized earlier. In addition though Organizations can have behind a firewall uh, software that automatically upstates 30,000 foot level reporting through enterprise reporting system software, EPRS software. Now, as so a next step, what I'm suggesting is that you set up a Zoom session with me that's there's no charge because no matter what I ever say or present or speak on 30,000 foot level chart, it's a hard to drive it home until you see how it applies to your particular situation. Now you can set up a Zoom session directly using the uh, going directly to our home page, or you can give us a call or email us to determine a good time this for you. So thank you for listening to this session. I do have a passion about this topic and I really hope to hear from you and demonstrate to you how your organization can save much money and improve the use of your resources so that the bottom line organization benefits.